What about when a missile hits something? Well, we don't have anything for a missile to hit yet and do damage or destroy it. Uh, so maybe we should get some motherships going. So in Space Invaders, there's usually every once in a while there's a random chance that there's like an alien ship that can go back and forth on the screen. Let's go add that. So to make that work, let's go create our prefab for a mothership. So we're gonna start with a new empty object. We'll call it a mothership. Uh, this is gonna get reset. We're gonna need to add a new component. Now that we're having uh, uh, two more than one team on the screen, let's go add that as a structure, team data, so we can identify what team the entity belongs to, because when missiles hit things, we gotta decide should it destroy or not. I component data, and this will be a authoring. And this just has a public team value, right? What team do you belong to? So we're gonna need that. Let's go add it. So we add a little component. <clears throat> Let's add team data. And this is gonna be an alien, right? It's a mothership. This should also have speed. So let's add a speed data component. And let's see, speed, we only care about the X axes because it's like a player, it only moves left and right. Uh, and to know, we want to know that this is a mothership as well. So I'm going to add a new tag. So we're going to add a new struct again, mothership tag. So this is going to be another empty component. Ah, uh, component data. Generate authoring. And that's it. Just a mothership tag, because we want to use it in systems. We want to be able to move the mothership, uh, so I need a tag. I need some way of searching for motherships. So a mothership tag. It has no data. So all this entity, this entity is going to have, let's make sure it has a convert. It's going to have is speed and a team. It's an alien, and it can move. And we know it's also a mothership. That's all that makes this up. So let's add this into our prefabs. Uh, let's open it back up here. Sorry, let me do one thing. Let's get rid of mothership now, don't need it. So on our mothership, let's add the graphic. Let's create a quad. And I have a mothership material that I wanna drag on here. And if we were to look at this from a scene perspective, it's not quite right, right? It's not showing this uh, in the manner that I expect it to show, which is okay. First, uh, first things first is uh, our rotation seems to be a little off. So we should go and rotate this. I'm trying to see if side, do I want to rotate here? Or do should we rotate just the quad? I think we just rotate the quad. Uh, yeah, let's just rotate the quad. Oops. Can we rotate the quad actually? Oh, I'm sorry. It is, it's is—it's not It's not that we need to rotate it. I'm sorry, I'm being dumb. It's that it's squashed, obviously, because we don't have the right size. So now let's let's fix up the correct sizing for this. Uh, it'll look, uh, so when it floats across the screen, it'll look a little better here. Uh, let's see. And is that enough? Should we squash maybe a little more? Let's get our right, uh, we have our material. Let's also make sure that the material is using the right shader. Remember we created our um, animator shader, our sprite animator. Let's make sure it's using that. And by doing that, it'll actually fix up our sizing because uh, uh, it'll use the right um, UVs. And we have three columns, we have one row. And from a speed perspective, it's a little slow. It looks a little blocky. Let's actually update the speed a bit and Make sure it's also a GPU instance, which is which it is. And now, see, it's animating. Obviously, it's a real simple animation. It's something complex. It's just three frames, so it's real blocky. But the, I think we get the we get the point. So there is our mothership now. Uh, let's make sure that gets saved, and we can back out. So we have a mothership. It has all of the right components. Let's go and add uh, some systems here. So we need a. We need a way to spawn a mothership, right? We need a way to spawn a mothership. Uh, so to spawn a mothership, let's add a new 
empty object here, and we'll call this the mothership spawner. This is not something that exists in the world. It's just going to be a singleton uh, game object. Convert to entity. And then we want to have a mothership spawn data as a component. And again, this is an I component data, nothing special. We've done this many, many times. I component data. This is an authoring component. And in here, let's have another prefab. Call it prefab. Let's add a float three for the spawn position, right? So where should the uh, spawn position, where should the mothership spawn when it does spawn? Uh, let's add some min max uh, uh, data so that we can kind of randomize. So we need a float uh, and call it min delay public float max delay. Let's also do what the current delay is. So we'll, we'll generate a random delay. We need to store what that random delay is and then we need another accumulator. We use these accumulators in lots of places. It's just a way for us to build time up and then do stuff uh, instead of doing it every frame. So we need to know where to spawn, uh, min and max times to spawn, and then wait the amount of time to spawn and then spawn. So there's some mothership spawn data. Let's go and add that onto our mothership. And let's see, spawn position. We know that negative uh, 9.5 is the left side of our bound. So let's do that. And we also know that the top is 6.5 because if we go to our game world, right, we know that negative 9.5 is the left side and 6.5 is the top. And we want to spawn close to the top. So let's say let's spawn at six, about half a world unit from the top. I think that'll be good enough. From a uh, spawn delay, let's do something really short. Uh, between zero and five seconds. And then we'll adjust that. We don't need to touch delay and accumulator. These are going to be written by the system. It's going to be written by the system. So let's go add uh, a system to make this happen. Create a new class. Mother ship spawn system. And as always, component systems, guys. Always start with the component system. Don't try and jump right into job component systems. Don't try and over-optimize right away. Uh, we don't need it. You don't need all of that fanciness. Start with getting, just get your game logic. Just get your game built. Get the logic in there. Go back and then look at the performance and optimize systems that need to be optimized because not everything needs to. Some, it's fine for systems to run on the UI thread. It's not going to hurt in a lot of cases. So the first thing we want to do, we want, we're want we going to do random spawn time. So to do that, I need to use random. Now, if you notice here, there's a, several random objects we can use. There's one in base.net system. There's the Unity Engine one that you're probably very familiar with. Uh, but what we want to use is the new random, which is in Unity Mathematics. And this one is compatible with the ECS system, and it can be used in the ECS system. So that's when we want to use, and it's a structure. Uh, that's not the right one, sorry. There it is, yep. And it's uh, it'll be a struct here in a moment. So we'll pick random. Now we have to initialize this. So let's go and override our on create. We've done it before. So when the system is created, let's make sure random gets initialized, gets created. So let's create a new random, and we need to pass it a seed, unlike Unity Engine Random, which you, you will get a, a default seed created for you based off time. We don't get that in this version of random. Maybe that'll change in the future, but right now uh, you need to set a random seed. Uh, you, or you can set a fixed seed, obviously, if you want to, but you can just set zero and it'll work. Every time we play the game, uh, you will get the same sequence of random events, but we want it to be random every time we play. Uh, so I am going to generate a random seed. And the way we do that is we actually go into the Unity engine. We use the Unity engine's random generator, and we want to get a range between int dot 
uh, min value and int dot max value. So let's just go generate a random seed. And to use that, unfortunately, right now we're, we'll use the Unity engine's random to uh, randomize the uh, ECS random uh, system. Just it is it it was it is what it is. Just follow this until uh, there's a better way of doing it. So in our on update, we want to be able to spawn a uh, we want to be able to spawn uh, a ship. And how are we gonna do that? Well, first thing I wanna do is that we're gonna need this random. I can't use, inside a for each of the entities, I can't just use this dot random. It's a bad idea and it's not good. So we wanna create a copy of it. So let's get a copy of our RNG. Is this dot random? This is a copy. Remember this, I'm gonna bring this back up shortly. This is a copy of random. Uh, it's not uh, an instance of random. We're also gonna need time because we had that accumulator, you know it's coming. So now let's go do a for each. And I don't care about the entity, I just wanna find all mothership spawn data. There should only be one. Uh, this is a singleton, I'm not using it as a singleton, uh, but this for each should be a for each of one because there's only one uh, mothership spawn, uh, not system, uh, spawn data. There's only one entity out there that has a spawn data. So this is always gonna be a for each of one, which is fine. Uh, it's a singleton for each. So the first thing we wanna do is, have we generated a random delay yet? So if spawn data dot delay is zero, which means we have not created a delay to spawn. Let's say spawn data dot mothership, um, spawn data dot delay. Uh, is equal to our RNG, right? RNG dot next float. And we want to pass in spawn data dot min delay and spawn data dot max delay. So go generate a random delay based off of between our min and our max. That's pretty much it. And then uh, if we have a delay, let's now, now that we have a delay no matter what, let's make sure the accumulator is getting incremented. And now we can check spawn data dot accumulator. Sorry. If the spawn data dot accumulator has hit our delay, then we know we can spawn. We know we can spawn a mothership. And we should also uh, kind of do a couple things here. One, the accumulator should get de-incremented de de by our delay. Uh, so that we can start building it back up. But also we want to, next time the system runs, I want to generate a new random delay. Because right now we're only going to create a one random delay, and for the rest of the game, we'll always use that delay. But every time I spawn or need to start spawning, I want to generate a new random delay. It just adds a little bit more randomness. So we just reset that to zero. And the next time the system runs, since the delay is zero, we will generate a new random delay. Then we'll start accumulating again until we've hit our delay, and now we can go spawn uh, this mothership. Uh, well, uh, how do we spawn this mothership and what do we do with it? Well, let's, let's go do it. Let's go create an entity ship. This, again, post update commands. Instantiate, instead of creating an entity, we want to instantiate because spawn data has a prefab. We want to create a copy of, uh, of that entity, essentially is what we're doing. And now let's go grab the position because we've spawned this ship, but it uh, will exist in the center of the screen unless we go change that. So let's build our translation first. Let me just keep it here. Say value is equal to our spawn data dot uh, spawn position. Uh, this is where we want to spawn by default, right? But because our, we want to do a randomness where um, I can either start on the left of the screen and go right or start on the right of the screen and go left, we want to get another random item out of our random number generator, just a yes or no, true, false. Every time we spawn, do we spawn on the right or do we spawn on the left? Uh, if true, I want to update my position to invert it, if I can type. We want to, we basically, instead of spawning on the left of the screen, let's spawn on the right side of the screen. Or if we're on the right side of the screen, spawn on the left side of the screen. And then we also need to grab our speed data and invert our speed data uh, for when we use the mover system. 
And here we can access the Entity Manager directly, get component data, right, for speed data, and get that from our, uh, we just need a copy of it, so I'm actually gonna get it off of the prefab. The reason I'm getting this off the prefab, I cannot use ship here. If I was to use ship here, this would actually fail. Because remember, this is the post update commands. This entity does not exist yet, and its components for this entity do not exist yet. Because this is gonna be executed in the future. We're gonna create this in the future. So I can't do this, but the prefab has our speed data. So let's go get the, the speed data that the prefab uh, would be setting to it. And now we can do the same thing for speed here, right? We take value.x and we can invert it, dot x. And now we have to go make sure this is gonna get written back into our new entity. So in our post update commands, I want to set a component for the new ship that we're gonna create and here are our new speed data. So this will override the default speed data that we were gonna get from the prefab and uh, give us the new speed because we're inverting it. And then at the end here, one more post update command of set component for the ship of our position. All right, we have our position. We potentially have updated our position or not. No matter what, we're gonna have a new position. So just make sure it gets set. And that's it for spawning. This, uh, this code here, which is, by the way, this is probably the most complex code we've written so far today uh, for spawning a mothership. Because, you know, there's some randomness and what side should we spawn on. So this will spawn on the left side by default and move right. Uh, or uh, if, this, if, if we, uh, every other time, or not every other time, but randomly, we could also spawn on the right-hand side and move left. So we just want to invert our speed data and our positional data so that it, um, so it goes the other way. And that's it. Except for that thing I told you guys when we first started writing this. This is a copy. Random is a copy of random. And how the new random generator works, this new random structure works is whenever I call next float or next bool, internally it has a data item. It has this, uh, it, it has a u int, it has an unsized integer that it is changing. Whenever we um, get random data, it's going to um, change the internal seed or the internal value. And I got a copy of that value here. And now we are modifying that internal value on RNG as it executes the year. But this dot random doesn't have it. So if I were not to, if I was just to run this right here, uh, we would get randomization. Randomization would happen uh, on what side it should spawn and the, the random delay. But the next time this ran, the exact same randomization would be applied again because we would be grabbing, uh, we are not updating what that updated seed is in, in the random generator. Uh, we'd be getting that same copy back and we'd be applying the same data. So to fix that, it's real simple. After our for each, just copy that data back into our random uh, variable so that when this runs again, we now have the updated data and we'll constantly be generating new random information. So that's it, that's our spawner. Let's see what happens if that, what, what happens when we run this. And let's hit play. So between zero and five seconds, we should get a mothership to spawn. Let's watch and see what happens in the next few seconds or so. If we did our job, uh oh, we did not do our job correctly. And that is because if we look at our mothership spawner, uh, we have actually not set our mothership here. So let's set our prefab, and let's try that again. And there was our mothership. There's our mothership. It spawned at uh, 9.5, and it spawned at 6. It's still in the world, uh, but it's way above us, and that is off of our screen. Obviously, we're not able to see it here, right? It is animating, by the way, so if I was to run it here, we'd see the animation running, but why? Uh, and uh, we also have a little, another little problem that we'll go fix. So we have a couple problems we need to go fix. And it's gonna keep spawning them, because we're not moving them, we don't have any other system in place. If 
we look at our simulation, we have a mothership spawn system, which happens here. Um, boop, boop, boop. Got it. Okay, so uh, this is an interesting um, phenomenon. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to see if I can go... It's hard. It might be hard to see. Do you notice how there's a flash that happens here on the middle of the screen? You hopefully you can see it out there. There's going to be a flash of the of uh, what we're trying to spawn in the middle of the screen, and that's not a good thing. I mean, I need to adjust our positions here. They're they're not where I want them to be. Uh, let's go negative nine point five. I think that's correct. And then our six was uh, too high above us. We'll find out here in a moment. There we go, that's good. And let's jump that up a little bit. So let's go to five and see where that lands. And then I'll have to adjust my world bounds. So five is good. So it sounds like my world bounds is not good. Uh, this should be going to 5.5. .5. And where's our player ship at? We're going negative five. So from A, Something here. Okay, good. So 5.5, uh, sorry for my world ship, 5.5. And this should be negative uh, th negative 3.5. No, sorry, other way around. Undo what I did there. Come on. There it is, and that should be negative 5.5. There we go. Nice and centered. Sorry, I was putting some bad data in there. So this should still spawn in a moment. Okay, there we go. So what's going on? Why are we getting that graphical glitch that happens here? Well, this happens to do with when I said we got to be careful with the frame ordering and the order that these systems run in. Uh, I have this mothership spawn system it's running after this transform system group in our mothership spawn system we are updating so let's take a look at that again mothership spawn system we're updating the translation so when this spawns when it spawns on that first frame we update its local transformation but its world transformation its world matrix is is still initialized to all defaults in the center of the world center of the screen that happens in the transform system group where it fixes that. But we've already passed that in the frame. We're spawning here. It gets spawned here. The transformations have already happened. What happens after this, though, is where we render. So for one frame, for one frame only, we're going to spawn. We set our local uh, position. That's not getting transformed to world position. And then we're rendering at that default world position. The next frame, the next frame we loop back to the beginning and the transform system group runs, and then it fixes itself. So to fix this issue, it's actually really simple. We just need to make sure that the mothership spawn system update before type of transform system group. So by fixing this, and I hit play again here, what we will see now is that the mothership spawn system runs before transform system group. So we're gonna spawn, and then we will immediately transform it to world space, uh, and then it will render. And you notice how there's no more flicker. There's no more flicker that happens uh, for one frame here. So we fix that. Okay, let's, uh, and now we also can see that motherships are spawning as they should. Let's implement the mothership system. So now we need to move motherships, right? Ships need to move. But also if they reach the end of the, the world, we want to make sure they despawn. So we had an I component, we had a component system. And in this component system, we know we've done this before. We do this with rockets, right? Rockets do this. Uh, they do a world bounds check and then they do movement. Uh, so we need to get the game world data. This not get singleton, game world data. Let's also get uh, delta time. And then let's go through our entities. Let's grab the entity. Let's get a ref to speed data. 
And then let's get a ref to our translation. Sorry, this needs to get added, import. Let's get our position. And this is gonna be our for each. We also need to make sure, remember we added a tag for this, with all, with all tag, mothership tag. So here's a query, right? We have a, we have a query here. Uh, and then this query is for entities that have speed data, that have translation, which by the way is a lot of entities. The player has this, uh, aliens will have this, so we need to differentiate this uh, for just motherships, and that's why we added this tag. So then also make sure that the query includes this mothership tag. We don't care about the data in it, we just want it as part of the query. So with all, will give us that. And all right, now that we have this data, uh, this is a simple, just like that rocket move system, it's gonna be very similar. Let's create float three. Let's grab a new position. This is equal to our position value plus speed dot value times delta time. And then do our bounds check. New position X instead of Y because uh, these only move in the X position on the Y position. Greater than game data dot bounds dot uh, Y. So if we're on the far right side or if X is less than or equal to game data bounds.x if we're on the far left side. If we're out of bounds on the x axis, this dot post update commands, right? To destroy entity, entity, destroy the mothership. We don't need it anymore and we can return. Otherwise, if we are not there, let's make sure that our position dot value is equal to new position. And that's it. That's our mothership system, right? It's not, it doesn't have to do anything else more fancy than that. We're gonna move the ship and if the ship is out of bounds, destroy the ship. It's almost exactly like the missile ship, missile system. And in fact, you could write a shared system that moved both of them if you came up with a data structure that can describe what bounds you care about for when you do a bounds check. So now here's a missile. We actually have two motherships because we have a really low respawn rate, which is fine. But you'll notice that these motherships are now getting destroyed when they get out of bounds. And you could keep it like this. You know, we have rockets that we could fire. Uh, we don't have a system for when rockets hit motherships. So, you know, I'm hitting a mothership every once in a while here. Uh, my aim's not the greatest, but it gets there. Uh, but it just passes right through because we don't have an, a, a, a contact system, right? We're not using a physics system. We're kind of doing our own thing. But first, what I want to change is, let's see, min delay of 5 to 15 seconds. Let's uh, actually, let's keep it high for the contact system. And then we'll change this. 